On the edge of a forest in southern Indiana, buried beneath the myths of America's first Thanksgiving, a wooden beast was carved into the hillside by pilgrims of another kind. Not settlers, but engineers. Not colonists, but craftsmen. They called it the voyage, and it was anything but a calm crossing. In 2005, Holiday World and Splash and Safari prepared to celebrate its 60th anniversary. Before this milestone, they didn't just want a new ride, they wanted a monument, a towering, terrain hugging, airtime laced testament to what a wooden roller coaster could be. Together with a new theme land, Thanksgiving, the park unveiled its most ambitious project ever. On July 13, 2005, the voyage was announced to the world. Designed by the Gravity Group, a new firm forged from the ashes of Custom Coasters International by Larry Bill, Corey Keeper, Chad Miller, and Michael Grant. The voyage was meant to stretch the limits of wooden roller coaster engineering. Holiday World's own Will Koch joined the design team, even opening the process to online coaster communities to help inspire the layout. Construction moved swiftly. Workers laid over 320,000 board feet of southern yellow pine. Giant galvanized steel bents rose from Indiana's rolling terrain, and the track extended for over a mile, 6,442 feet, making it the second longest wooden roller coaster in the world. On May 6, 2006, the voyage finally opened to the public. Riders were invited to bid for the very first voyage, with proceeds benefiting children's hospitals. Holiday World had created a modern myth, and they were just getting started. Here's what they built. It has a track length of 6,442 feet, nearly 1.22 miles. Lift height, 163 feet above the station. First drop, 154 feet. Top speed, 67.4 miles per hour. Ride duration, two minutes and 45 seconds. Air time, 24.3 seconds, more than any other wooden roller coaster in the entire world. Banking, three 90 degree bank turns. Tunnels, five underground tunnels crossed eight times total, a wooden roller coaster world record. Train capacity, two Philadelphia toboggan coasters trains, 24 riders each, averaging 1,200 riders per hour. Train configuration, six cars per train, each with two rows, lap bars and seat belts for safety. Within months, the voyage claimed the crown, Amusement Today's golden ticket award for best new ride of 2006. But that was only the beginning. For five years straight, 2007 through 2011, it reigned as the number one wooden roller coaster in the entire world. A legend, not just of the Midwest, but of the entire thrill industry. In 2013, Time Magazine declared it the best wooden roller coaster in the United States. Coaster fans around the world have since made their own pilgrimage, their own voyage to Santa Claus, Indiana, to test their courage and to survive the storm. This was never meant to be a pleasure cruise. This was a voyage. And the moment that chain crests the summit, your crossing begins. If the heart of the voyage is its story, then its bones are built from steel and timber, and every single joint, ledger, and anchor was forged with purpose. Before the first footing was poured, the Gravity Group had to conquer the terrain, literally. The Thanksgiving section of Holiday World is carved into the hilly woodland of southern Indiana. That terrain wasn't a challenge, it was the blueprint, to maximize thrill while minimizing material. The design used the terrain as elevation, Instead of building support structures up to reach drop heights, they dug trenches to let track fall below the natural grade. The result? A coaster that achieves 173 feet of elevation change from highest to lowest point without a single artificial valley. Supporting that massive layout is a hybrid structure, not entirely wood, not entirely steel. Let's start from the ground up. Each of the voyage's footings is a poured-in-place reinforced concrete pier, or slab. 
a solid block of concrete with a steel rebar reinforcement designed to carry vertical loads and resist shifting. These footings range from shallow pads to deep set pedestals depending on location and soil load. Each steel support column is attached via anchor bolts embedded during the concrete pour. These bolts are threaded steel rods torqued tight through base plates to ensure permanent attachment and resist lateral shear. Instead of traditional wooden trestle bins, the Voyage uses a full galvanized steel support structure, a rarity for a wooden roller coaster. Every vertical column, lateral brace, and diagonal member is hot dip galvanized structural steel protected from corrosion by a layer of zinc. This design dramatically reduces maintenance while increasing lateral stiffness and vertical load bearing capacity. With over 750 tons of structural steel on site, this skeleton is over-engineered for endurance. The support structure forms a series of bents, A-frame style cross sections built at each hill and curve. Each bent is cross braced with diagonal X members for shear bracing and longitudinal ties that run parallel to the track to prevent sway. The result, a triangulated truss system capable of absorbing the violent vertical and lateral loads of a train hauling 24 riders at over 67 miles per hour. Now let's talk about the track stack. While the support structure is steel, the track is entirely wood. The classic stacked laminate design that give wooden roller coasters that iconic and classic feel. Each rail is built from multiple layers of southern yellow pine, laminated in place using green shank nails and adhesive. This wood, southern yellow pine, is chosen for its stiffness and durability under load. The typical stack includes the bottom layer, ledger boards mounted directly to the steel cross ties, mid layers, laminated pine boards shaping the track profile, and a top layer with a steel running plate, a flat steel bar the road wheels ride on, a side layer, a side friction rail guiding lateral motion, and another bottom layer which is an upstop rail ensuring train restraint during airtime. These rails are bent into place using clamps and formwork, then bolted through the track using lag bolts and gusset plates to ensure that it stays rigid. Five separate tunnels are integrated into the layout, not as afterthoughts, but as primary structural features. Many are cast in place concrete boxes formed below grade designed to resist earth pressure and water infiltration. The ride dips into these subterranean trenches eight times, some at high lateral g-force. These tunnels aren't just thematic, they're structural. Because of Indiana's variable weather, the design accounts for thermal expansion and humidity-based swelling. Expansion joints, small gaps between track plates, allow the structure to breathe with the temperature. Combined with natural damping from the wood and dynamic flexibility of steel, this ensures longevity without compromising the ride's profile. The Voyager structure is more than just bones, it's a hybrid, not just of wood and steel, but of old world carpentry and modern metalworking, forged together to deliver a ride that defies gravity, defies age, and defies the limits of what a wooden roller coaster can be. When you're sailing into the unknown, you don't build something that might last. You build something that will. It looks like chaos, but it's all just numbers. The Voyage is a roller coaster built not just on timber, but on tension, acceleration, inertia, and control. Let's decode the physics behind the madness, one formula at a time. To calculate the total energy available before the first drop, we start with gravitational potential energy. PE equals M, the mass of the train, times G, gravity, times H, the height of the drop. So we take 8,000 kilograms times 9.81, which gives us 78,480. Multiply that by 47 meters, and the total energy at the top is 3,686,560 joules. To convert that potential energy into speed, we solve for the velocity at the base using energy conservation. Velocity equals the square root of 2 times gravity times height. 2 times 9.81 is 19.62. Multiply that by 47 meters and we get 921.14. The square root of that is approximately 30.35 meters per second, or about 67.9 miles per hour. 
To determine how much force presses riders into their seat at the bottom of the first drop, we calculate centripetal acceleration and convert that to g-force. We square 30.35 to get 921.1. Divide that by 55 meters and we get a centripetal acceleration of 16.74 meters per second squared. 1 plus 16.74 divided by 9.81 gives us 2.71 g's. Riders feel nearly three times their body weight pushing them into the seat. Now let's solve for the negative g-force riders feel at the top of a camelback hill when their body starts to lift from the seat, aka airtime. Velocity squared is 400. Radius times gravity is 588.6. 400 divided by 588.6 gives us 0 0.68. One minus that equals 0 0.32 g's, a soft moment of floater airtime. Finally, to see how much energy is dissipated by the final brakes, we calculate kinetic energy at brake entry. 15 squared is 225. Half of 8,000 is 4,000. Multiply 4,000 times 225 to get 900,000 joules. That's the energy the brakes convert to heat every cycle. Each drop, each hill, each turn. Engineered. This ride doesn't just run on wood and steel. It runs on the laws of physics. The voyage is not chaos, it's calculus. We've seen the bones, we've solved the forces, but now we step into the pit where power meets safety, where steel moves under logic. Now we become the mechanic. The voyage begins with a 163 foot tall lift hill powered by a heavy duty chain drive system. This is a continuous loop of steel chain driven by a motorized sprocket at the top of the hill. The train's lead car has a pivoting chain dog that latches into the moving chain. As the chain rotates, it drags the train up the incline. Should the chain fail, the anti-rollback system kicks in. Those loud clicks you hear, that's the anti-rollback pause. Spring-loaded steel arms locking into a ratchet rail tooth by tooth. The anti-rollback works without sensors, electricity, or code. It's pure mechanical redundancy. The voyage is divided into a series of blocks, independent sections of track that only one train can occupy at a time. These include the station block, the lift hill block, the main course block, the mid course brake block, and the final brake run block. Each block is monitored using proximity sensors that detect the train's exact position. If one train hasn't cleared its block, the one behind it is held back. The brains behind this logic? The PLC, the programmable logic controller. The PLC reads every single sensor. If block four isn't clear, it won't allow dispatch from block one. That's interlocking logic, fail safe by design. Now the Voyage uses friction brakes to stop the train. Underneath each train is a brake fin, a steel plate that passes between a set of brake calipers mounted to the track. When the brakes engage, they clamp the fin, turning momentum into friction and then friction into heat. The final brake run stops the train before the station but there's also a mid-course brake about halfway through the ride. Each car of a PTC train rides on a three-wheel assembly, the road wheel on the top of the rail, the side friction wheel pressed against the inner rail, and the upstop wheel beneath it. These wheels are made of polyurethane over steel cores, chosen for shock absorption, grip, and durability. The restraint system uses ratcheting lap bars, which lock into place over each rider's lap, reinforced by redundant seat belts. The lap bar clicks down and stays there until the operator unlocks it. If the bar isn't secure in the slightest, the train will not dispatch. The PLC checks that as well. Operators interact with a control panel housing physical switches and digital indicators. They confirm that all restraints are locked, platform gates are closed, the next block is clear, and the lift motor is ready. Once all systems are green, the operator presses dispatch and the PLC gives it permission to go. Every light on that board is a summary of a sensor, a signal, a check. The system protects itself from human error. That's the point. In an emergency, pressing the e-stop immediately cuts power to the lift and engages all brakes. The PLC freezes the ride. Because the voyage runs on one law above all else. If it's not safe, it doesn't move. Every single morning, before guests arrive, Crews perform a track walk. They inspect every bolt, brace, and splice from lift hill to brake run. 
wheel assemblies are checked and swapped if they're worn out. Brake fins are aligned. Lift tension is calibrated. If anything is out of spec, it's fixed before the ride ever opens. Now the Voyage includes redundant systems, dual trains, dual restraints, the lap bar and the seat belt, multi-block safety zones, passive mechanical backups like the anti-rollback, sensor-based interlocks, emergency access platforms in valleys and hills. In other words, the ride doesn't rely on just one thing going right. It's built so so many things have to go wrong before there's ever any chance of a risk. The track may be wood, the structure may be steel, but the soul of the voyage, that's logic, sensors, relays, brakes, bolts, blocks. This rod is a system, and every cycle it runs is proof that safety is engineered. Some rides are built to entertain, some to impress, but the voyage was built to endure. And now, with our tools down and our data tallied, we issue the final grade. This ride doesn't ease you in, it doesn't whisper, it shouts. From the moment you crest the lift hill, the voyage delivers what few coasters dare, relentless pacing. You get three massive drops, over two dozen moments of airtime, five tunnels, the comfort it's a wooden roller coaster, not glass smooth, but it's honest and it's hard. Some find it jarring, others find it alive. You ride the voyage like a bull, not a bike. And then there's the finale. The train doesn't coast, it collapses into that station like it just survived a storm. In a world of calculated coasters, the voyage feels like it's testing its limits every single cycle. And that is why fans keep coming back over and over every year for many including myself, it's the greatest wooden roller coaster they have ever ridden. And from an engineering standpoint, the Voyage is bold, not just for its stats, though they're extreme, but for how much it asked of traditional wooden roller coaster technology. It marries that classic stacked wood track with a fully galvanized steel frame. It integrates five tunnel plunges into a terrain layout with 173 feet of elevation difference, and it delivers 24.3 seconds of negative G-force airtime across a mile and a quarter of that of track, a world record. The mechanical systems are robust, tried and true. Chain lift, friction brakes, redundant scissors, fail-safe block zones. There's nothing experimental here, just refinement, execution, and dare I say, perfection. And when the wear started to show, the gravity group adapted, integrating vertical laminated track systems and retracking sections without compromising the original layout. Yes, the PTC trains are heavy, Yes, the track needs more attention than the steel does, but those trade-offs are known, planned for, and solved season after season. From the first blueprint to today's last dispatch, the voyage was engineered for intensity, and it was engineered to last. Understand, we grade not just what a ride does, but how well it does it. And the voyage doesn't just thrill, it challenges. It doesn't just operate, it endures. The rider experience is an A+. The engineering execution is an A+. And surprise, surprise, every single person watching this video that has ever ridden this roller coaster saw this right here coming. The overall grade for the voyage at Holiday World and Splash and Safari is an A+. This is a ride that lives up to its name. You don't just ride it, you journey through it. The voyage isn't just one of the greatest roller coasters ever built. It's a masterclass in storytelling, physics, and endurance. And now, you know what it took to build it.